Good morning students, I welcome you all for another lecture on the course Computer Architecture and Organization. From last few classes we discussed about uh, uh, different concepts in memory systems like introduction part, types of uh, read-only memories and we discussed uh, something regarding to uh, cache memory in previous classes. In this class uh, I would like to uh, discuss about uh, an important concept which is uh, mapping functions. So let's start our concept mapping functions. Cache memory bridges the speed mismatch between raw system and the main memory. We know this uh, why we are using cache memories in our computer systems. If you didn't have any cache memory in the system, no doubt the speed of operation of processor is high compared to the remaining devices which are present in the system. In the case of whenever the processor wants to communicate with the memory, the processor has to wait certain amount of time either to perform a read operation or a write operation on a memory. Due to this, the valuable time of the CPU was wasted. To overcome this difficulty, what we are trying to do is we took the help of a cache memories. What is cache memories? The cache memories are smaller and faster memories. And these are cache memories we place either on the CPU or we can place the cache memory in between our CPU and our main memory. So that our CPU need not be communicating with the main memory in all times. Whatever the information the CPU wants just it asks that information to the cache. If that information is available in a cache, simply the cache transfer that information to a processor. And here the processor time need not be wasted because the speed of operation of a cache is more or less is equivalent to the CPU. So that the valuable time of a CPU was not wasted. So that's why here what we are saying is the cache memory bridges the speed mismatch between processor and the main memory. And here there are two important terms we are focusing. One is cache hit. What is cache hit is? What happens when cache hit occurs? You remember friends cache hit means whatever the information that can be asked by the CPU. That information was present in the cache. Simply that what we can call is cache hit. So, when cache hit occurs, the required word was a present in the cache memory. Once the required word was a present in the cache, the simply that word was a transfer to a processor. So see here friends, you can assume this is our CPU, this is our CPU and generally here you have a main memory, this is a main memory and in between this you have a cache memory. So that the CPU always communicating with cache memory. And we know that this is a faster memory compared to main memory. So that here the CPU can't wasting its time to communicating with the cache. Because its speed is more or less is equivalent to CPU. So here cache hit means cache hit means whatever the information the CPU has that information was available in cache memory. So that our CPU need not be communicating with the main memory. So once the data is available in our cache, simply the data was a transfer to a CPU. So here that's what I'm saying. The required word is a present in the cache memory. That means cache it. The required word is a delivered to the CPU from the cache memory. That's it. So at a faster rate, the information was a transferring from cache memory to a CPU. And second thing, what a cache miss is? The cache miss means if the required information was not available in a, a cache memory automatically that we consider as cache miss. When the cache miss occurs, what happens? The required word is not present in the cache memory, that means cache miss. The block containing the required word has to be mapped from 
from the main memory. So see here friends, this is our CPU, this is cache memory and this is main memory. The information transfer between these are components like this. So the information transfer between a cache memory and a CPU done in terms of words and the information transfer between main memory and cache memory that was done in terms of blocks. Here you have to remember one important point that is unless this cache memory can hold only a portion of main memory information. If I say exactly a Xerox copy of portion of information of main memory was available in cache memory. That's the meaning of this. It is very clear friends what are the information that was present in a cache? No doubt that information is also available in main memory. You have to remember this point. So, when cache miss was occurred, then what happens? Once a cache miss was occurred, the block containing the required word has to be mapped from the main memory to cache memory. So, if the required word is not available in a cache, that means no doubt the required word may present in main memory. But we are not accessing the required word only from main memory to cache. Instead of that accessing of a required word, what I have to do is, I will go and verify all the blocks, a block which contains a required word, only that block of information I was a transfer from main memory to cache. Later, the required word is a transfer to a CPU. So that is the meaning of this. Now, cache mapping defines what a cache mapping is. Cache mapping defines how a block of information, how a block from the main memory is a mapped to the cache memory lines in case of cache miss. How your main memory block was mapped onto cache memory lines that indicates cache mapping when it happens once a cache miss was occurred. So from this it is very clear friends that is your cache memory is a smaller and it is a faster and one important thing is there is no empty spaces or empty locations in a cache. That means always the cache memory is full with the data. And here I would like to remember one more important point I would like to quote it here. That is the organization of our cache memory and main memory is like this. Let you can assume this is my main memory. Main memory have a set of locations. Those set of locations we divided into a number of blocks like this. Let you can assume this is one block. I can call this is my block 0. This is a block 0. And next, another set of locations I consider as uh, block 1. This is I can call as block 1. Like this, my main memory contains uh, a good number of blocks like this. For example, if I issue my main memory has some k number of blocks, this is a k minus 1 block. Then total number of blocks present in this main memory was the k blocks. That you have to remember. Coming to the cache, let you can assume this is my cache memory, which is a smaller memory. And this memory has a, a set of lines like this. So line 0, line 1, line 2 and so on. This is uh, line M minus 1. If I issue that cache memory have M lines. So this is line 0, line 1, line 2, and this is line M minus 1. So here important thing is the main memory block is equal to cache memory line. So that here I can already put it that this cache memory is a full with the data, there is no empty locations. Once a cache miss was occurred, what happens? What all the information that can be asked by the CPU that was not available in a cache? No doubt that information was present in main memory because only the cache holds a portion of main memory information. So that what I have to do is I'm not going to access only a required board from this main memory instead of that. What I have to do is I'll go and verify all the blocks of main memory. A block which contains a required word, that block I transfer to cache memory line instead of only transferring a required word. So that is the meaning of this. 
So how we are transferring main memory blocks onto the cache memory lines that indicates your cache mapping. How we are maps the main memory blocks onto cache memory lines. So that indicates a mapping function. So that is the meaning of this particular statement. So here guys, this is a, so clear back idea to you. So this is a main memory and this is a cache memory and this is your processor. The information transferred between a processor and a cache that was done in terms of words. But data transferring between a cache memory and a main memory that was done in terms of blocks. So I think now you have an idea. How this uh, main memory information, that is main memory blocks, occupies some uh, cache memory lines, that what we can call is cache mapping, or uh, simply we can call as mapping functions or mapping methods that we are going to discuss. So the main memory is divided into equal size partitions called blocks, and sometimes those blocks we can also call as frames. Cache memory is also divided into partitions having the same size as that of main memory blocks called lines. That means the partitions which are present in main memory we call blocks or a frames and the partitions which are present in a cache we call lines. Here you have to remember the size of a line in a cache is equal to the size of a block in main memory. So that is the meaning of this. During cache mapping a block of main memory is simply compared to the cache memory line and the block is not actually brought from the main memory only the copy of the block was transferred that's what i'm saying actually we're not transferred entire block what we are transferring from main memory to cache memory once the cache miss was occurred just we are transferring only the xerox copy of a block from main memory to cache memory so that is the meaning of this particular statement so this mapping function, so the cache mapping is performed using a three different uh, techniques or I can call there are three different types of mapping function or there are three different types of mapping methods. So in that the first one is a direct mapping, second one is associated to mapping and third one is set associated to mapping. So in our systems we can all use any one of these three different mapping functions to map main memory blocks onto the cache memory lines. So, I can go to explain these three mapping methods by considering a small example. In that example, I can give some parameters of both the main memory as well as cache memory. The parameters are like this. First, I start with the cache memory parameters. The total size of a cache memory is of 4K words. And the size of a line in a cache or line size in a cache is equal to 32 words. Then the number of lines present in the cache. So here I can write it is 128. How we are getting this 128? So the simple calculation is like this: number of lines, number of lines in cache is equal to cache size, cache size divided by line size. So what is the cache size? The total size of cache memory is 4K. So cache size is equal to 4K words. Then line size. What the line size? Line size is 32 words. So line size is 32 words. If the two words are cancelled out. So simply it is uh, 4K divided by 32. I can written as a 4K like this. 4 is nothing but a 2 square. Into 1K is nothing but 2 power 10. By 32 is nothing but 2 power 5. Then what is the numerator value? 2 power 12 divided by denominator value is a 2 power 5. If you solve this, you may get a 2 power 7. What are 2 power 7? It is equal to 128. So the number of lines present in my cache memory was 128 lines. So you can see friends, its structure. This is your cache memory. The number of lines present in a cache is equal to 128 lines. Total, the size of cache memory 
is equal to 4k words. These are 4k words are organized in terms of 128 lines like this. 128 lines. So this is my line 0, line 1, line 2 and this is line 127. What is the size of each line? Each line size is equal to 32 words. So this is a word 0, word 1, word 2 and so on. This is word 31. So word 0, word 1, word 2 and so on. Word 31. Then total number of words present in a line is equal to 32 words. So like this our cache memory was arranged. So similarly I can go for main memory parameters. So the total size of main memory was 64k words and the size of block in a main memory is equal to 32 words. Why it is a 32 words? Already we took a line size in a cache is equal to 32 words. So that we have to go and take a block size in main memory also 32 words because the line size in a cache is equal to block size in main memory. That's why here the block size is equal to 32 words. Then how many number of blocks present in the main memory? It is equal to 2048 which is equal to 2k. How we are getting this value? Again use the same logic previous case. So it is number of blocks, number of blocks in main memory is equal to main memory size divided by block size. What is the main memory size? It is 64k words divided by block size 32 words. Again these words, words are cancelled out. Then it is just 64k divided by 32. This 64k we can written as uh, 2 power 16 divided by 32. We written as uh, 2 power 5 which is equal to 2 power 11. It is equal to 2048 and which is equal to 2k. Like this we are getting this value that is 120. Sorry, 2048 blocks or simply 2k blocks. So block size is equal to line size. That's why it is equal to 32 words. Now listen cap. At any instant of time, only 128 blocks out of 2048 blocks of main memory can reside in the cache memory. Because what the cache function? The cache can hold only the Xerox copy of main memory information. In the main memory, only a portion of information was copied in cache. Your main memory size is equal to 2048 blocks and your cache size is just only 128 lines. So that what I have to say here is only 128 blocks of main memory information was copied into 128 lines of a cache at any instant of time. So that is the meaning of this. The cache memory can hold only the copy of main memory information. So from this what we can understand is there is no empty location or an empty line which was present in the cache. Always the cache is full with the data that you have to remember friends. Now based on these parameters I am going to explain the mapping methods or mapping techniques one after another. So first I start with the direct mapping. So what is the direct mapping is? The first point is like this. It is a simple mapping technique out of three mapping techniques. We have three mapping techniques. One is a direct mapping, second one is associative, and third one is set associative. Out of these three mapping techniques, the simplest mapping technique was direct mapping. Why it is the simplest? For that, my answer is like this. Each block of main memory maps to only one dedicated cache line. That means here what important thing is, we assign the lines of a cache memory to particular blocks of main memory. That means, for example, block I must be goes to line K. It always goes to line K itself. There is no alternate for block I it has copy onto other than line K. So that's why here what I can say is, each block of main memory maps to only one dedicated cache line. So that's why it is a simple. Next, 
log k of main memory maps into the k modulo n of the cache where n is uh, the total number of lines in the cache memory. So what is the dedicated line for lock in a main memory? The log k of main memory goes to which line of a cache? In order to calculate that here I was using a simple relation that is this that is main memory block k modulo n where m indicates the total number of lines present in my cache memory. By using the simple relation I dedicate the cache memory lines to a different blocks of main memory. So that you have to remember that's why it is a simple method. The main memory address viewed as three fields like word field line field and then pack field. So what here are main memory address? The CPU can't generate. The cache memory address. What your CPU can generate? Always your CPU can generate a main memory address. In case you are example your main memory size is equal to 64k words. To identify each and every memory location of a main memory definitely we have to go and use a 16 bit address so that our CPU always generate a 16 bit address because a 2 power 16 is equal to 64k. What about the 16 bit address your CPU has to generate? That address can be divided into like this are three partitions if you are using direct mapping in your system. If you are using direct mapping method to map main memory blocks onto the cache memory lines, once a cache miss was occurred, the CPU generator 16 bit address can be divided into these are three fields. One is a tag field, second one is a line field, and third one is word field. So, how we are dividing this, uh, that we can go and discuss. Here, in the example, the main memory location was addressed with the help of our 16 bits. So, that, that is 16 bits now, I am going to divide it into three partitions. So, first partition is word. Second partition is line and last partition character. So how many bits I was dedicated to word? So if you consider the line size or a block size in a cache memory or in a main memory, the number of words present in a block or a line is equal to 30. To identify each and every word, how many bits I need? To identify 32 words, I need 5 bits because 2 power 5 is equal to 32. So that here for this word field, we dedicated 5 bits. With the help of 5 bits, that is the least significant 5 bits out of our 16 bits are used for selection of a word in a line of a cache. And next field was a line field. How many lines are present in a cache? The number of lines present in a cache in our example was 128 lines. To identify any line of that cache memory, the number of bits that are needed is equal to 7 bits because of 2 power 7 is equal to 128. So that here for line field, we dedicated 7 bits. We dedicated 7 bits. 5 bits for word, 7 bits for line. Out of 16 bits, 12 bits are over, we left with 4 more bits. Those are four more bits we dedicated to pack field. So that's what I am mentioning here. For selection of specific word in the line, five bits are used. These are five bits are treated as word field. Out of 16 bits, five bits for selection of a word. We left with another 11 more bits. Next, for selection of specific line in the cache, seven bits are used. So that these are seven bits we consider as a line field. So out of 11, 7 bits are over. We left with another 4 more bits. So the remaining 4, four, four bits are used for tag field. So like this, your processor generator 16 bit address can be split into these are 3 different partitions like a word field, line field and then tag field in case of tag field. Right. So this is gives a better idea to you the direct mapping cache table. See here friends, these all are cache lines. The number of lines present in a cache is equal to 128 because we start from line 0, we end set line 127. So that these lines are dedicated to some of main memory blocks. Line 0 is dedicated to 
block 0, block 128, and block 256, and so on. That means these blocks only go to line 0 in the cache. These blocks can't go to line 1, or can't go to line 2, or any other lines of cache other than line 0. Similarly, line 1 of the cache is a dedicated to block 1, block 128, block 257. Only these blocks are goes to line 1. Similarly, line 2 was dedicated to these blocks, line 3 was dedicated to these blocks. Coming to line 127, these are dedicated to block 127, block 255 and so on, block 2047 because your main memory has total 2048 blocks. So range is from 0 to 2047. That means these blocks only goes to this corresponding line of a cache. They are didn't go to other than this particular line. So we know that uh, the 16 bit address of uh, main memory that was generated by CPU, it can be split into like this. Word field 4, we are dedicating 5 bits. For line, we are dedicating 7 bits. For tag, we are dedicating the remaining 4 bits. Yes, this diagram gives uh, more idea for a direct memory. See here friends, uh, this is your cache memory and this is your main memory. See here friends, this is uh, my block 0. You can assume this block 0 is uh, line 0. Don't confuse because block size is equal to line size. I can go and use it synonymously. Sometimes I can call line and sometimes I can call as uh, block. But if I want to call in a specific way, in a cache memory we have a lines instead of blocks. In case of uh, main memory, we have a blocks instead of lines that you have to remember. So this I treated as line 0. This line 0 is dedicated to which blocks? Our main memory. This line 0 is dedicated to this block 0. And it is also dedicated to block 128. And it is also dedicated to block 256 and so on. So, this line 0 is a dedicated to block 0, block 128, block 256 and so on. And similarly, this is not to block 1, you know, specifically I can call this is line 1. This line 1 is a dedicated to block 1 as well as block, block 129 and then block 257. Only these blocks are goes to line 1. Similarly, this is my line 127. This line 127 is dedicated to block 127, block 255 and block 2047. Like this, each and every line of a cache is dedicated to some particular blocks of main memory. So this is what we can call is direct mapping. Right, fine. What is the advantage and disadvantage of this direct map? So obviously the advantage of a direct mapping is one is simple because we are dedicating the lines of a cache memory to different blocks of a main memory. So it is a simple as well as it is inexpensive. These are the two advantages. But what the disadvantage is? It has a disadvantage. So because of that we shifted to the second one that is associated. So the major disadvantage is the fixed location for a given block. So first thing is each and every block have a dedicated line so that a fixed line of cache for each and every block of main memory. So here it is a clear cut. This so and so block of main memory has to go to so and so line of a cache. So this is somewhat constraint. So fixed location for a given block. And second, this is a major. If your program access two blocks that map to same line repeatedly, then the cache misses are very high. This is a contention problem. What the meaning of this? So I can go to the previous slide. So see here, guys, so line zero. So here you just see. This line 0 is dedicated to block 0, block 128. For example, my processor asks in time instant T1 
it wants data from log zero location. At the time and state, this log zero available in line zero. That log zero is available in line zero, so that our cache sent the required over to the CPU. In the next time incident at T2, I want the information from lock number 128. But this lock is not available in the cache. Why? Because this lock 128 also goes to line 0. But already this line 0 was occupied by block 0. In order to do the second task in time instant T2, I must have transferred a word from block 128. But this 128 block has to go to line 0. But that incidental line 0 was already utilized by block 0. So that what I have to do is, I send what all the existing block in a line 0 back to main memory. Later, I transfer this block 128 to line 0. It takes a certain amount of time. In the next time instant T3, in the next time instant T3, Again, my CPU wants an information from block number 256. Block number 256. This block number 256 also goes to line 0. Right now, line 0 is a dedicated to block number 128. Then what I have to do? Again, I may get cache miss. Then I send back this line 0 information back to block 128. And later I bring block 256 into cache memory line 0. Again, it is a time taking process. If this is the scenario, maximum cases you may get cache misses. This is called a contention problem. This is called a contention problem. So that was arises in case of a direct map. Why it was arises? Here it is. The reason for this is the lines of a cache memory was dedicated to different blocks of main memory. That's the problem. So to overcome this, we shifted to the second type of a mapping that is associated to mapping or associated to mapping function. So what we can do in this? A main memory block can be loaded into any line of a cache memory. That's it. There is no dedication of a lines of a cache to different blocks of main memory in case of this mapping. Any block of main memory may go to or may map to any line of cache. There is no restriction. So that automatically, whatever the problem I was faced in case of direct mapping, that can be overcome. Right? So that is. But here important thing is, the CPU generated address, which is main memory address, interpreted as only two partitions. One partition we consider as a tag and the second one we consider as a word. One is a tag and second one is a word. In previous case, I have a three partitions like a tag, line, and word. But here there is no scope for a line. Here, what happens is I have a tag field and straight away I have word field because uh, a need block of main memory may go to any line of a cache. Then the tag field is uniquely identifies the block of main memory. So you treat it true. Your CPU generates a 16-bit address. In that least significant 5 bits are used for identification of word because your block size is equal to 32 words. To identify each word in a block, I need a 5 bits. So out of a 16 bits, 5 bits are dedicating for identification of word, the rest of 11 bits are used for identification of a block. So that here the tag field is uniquely identifies block of main number. Each cache line set tag is examined simultaneously to determine if a block is in cache. So here what we have to do is, what all the information that can be asked by the CPU, that information is available in the cache or not, I have to go and verify this by simply comparing of a tag field bits with the, all the lines at tag fields. That means I have to go and to do total 2 power 11 comparisons. It is a tedious process. But an advantage is, there is no scope for existence of contention problem because any block of main memory may go to any line of a cache. But at the same time here the problem is we have to do more comparisons because uh, in order to identify the required word was present in the cache or not, I have to go and verify the tag bits. That is a higher order 11 bits I comparing with uh, all tag bits of uh, lines which are present in the cache. This is a somewhat tedious process. Right?
so it gives some more clarity to us so this is uh, lines of a cache I have still 128 lines I am already told you that don't think it is a block you can call these are lines total I have 128 lines line 0 to line 127 and I have total 2048 blocks it is not 2047 it is a 2048 blocks so see here friends this block 0 may goes to line 0 or it may goes to line 127 in between it may goes to any line there is no restriction and similarly block 1 may goes to line, line 0 or the same block 1 goes to line 127 there is no restriction here that means uh, any block of main memory may goes to any line of a cache so that is the beautiful advantage we are getting from this and coming to the last mapping technique is set associate to map what happens in direct mapping we are dedicating cache memory lines to different blocks of main memory and what we did in associate in associate to any block of main memory may goes to any line of a cache what is the problem in the first one the problem in direct mapping is existence of cut contention problem what is the problem in the case of associate to mapping we have to do more number of comparisons to overcome these difficulties we shifted to the third method or third mapping function or third mapping technique which is a set associate to mapping so the first point is like this this mapping is intermediate to the previous two mapping techniques it is intermediate that means we consider the advantage of direct mapping and we consider the advantage of associate to mapping by combining of these two we may get this set associate to mapping so that's why this mapping is intermediate to the previous two mapping techniques the lines of cache memory are grouped into sets this is important here it is set associated to that's why what are the lines i have in a cache those are groups into number of sets and the mapping allows a block of main memory to reside in any line of a specific set that means a block of main memory may goes to any line of a specific set for example i have a set 0 then the set 0 i have some n number of lines block m may goes to any line of this n number right so that is a beauty of this particular set associative the flexibility of associative mapping is reduced from full freedom to set specific lines in case of set associative we have a more flexibility because any block of main memory may go to any line of a cache but here that freedom somewhat restricted why because in case of set associative a particular block of main memory may go to only the lines which are exist on a specific set so that's why here the point of this uh, is that the flexibility of associated mapping is reduced from full freedom to a set of a specific lines that happens in set associated this is also reduces the searching overhead because the searches are restricted to number of sets in previous case I have to do more number of comparisons because in previous case I have 11 bits are dedicated for tag I have to do 2 power 11 comparisons to identify the required word was present in a cache or not here we need not be to that many number of comparisons instead of comparing all those things here we have to go and compare only the sets so comparison count will be reduces so that is the beauty of this also the contention problem of a direct mapping is is by having a few choices for block replacement consider the previous example organize the cache with four lines in a set how many lines i have i have total 128 lines these 128 lines i'm going to arrange in some good number of sets for each set how many lines i was dedicated i dedicated four lines so number of sets i was getting here is number of sets here i was getting is total number of lines divided by line number of lines in a set number of lines in a set then i can write total lines are 128 divided by the number of lines for a set that was a 4 so it is equal to 2 power 7 divided by 2 power 2 
which is equal to 2 power 5 that is equal to I have 32 sets I have 32 sets so that here I can clearly mention that the tag field of associative mapping that can be divided into two groups or two partitions one partition I can call as a set address and second partition I can call as tag address in previous case this is the scenario so least significant 5 bits for identification of words so least significant 5 bits we consider as a W field and next 11 bits we consider as a tag field but now this tag field can be split it into two halves like this one half I can call as a set and another half I can call as tag how many sets here I have total number of sets are 32 so for identification of each set I need a 5 bit address 5 bits for word 5 bits for tag and we left with the 6 bits those are 6 bits we consider as tag field so that is the logic here friends see here that is a partition so one group is returned as a set and the second group is returned as tag set and tag each set contains 4 lines total number of sets are 32 based on previous calculation the main memory address is divided into 3 parts like this word field, set field and then tag field under word field we are dedicating 5 bits under set field we are dedicating 5 bits and then tag field we are dedicating 6 bits right so this diagram gives a clear cut idea to us so these are 4 lines I consider as set 0 I consider as set 0 now see here friends this line block 0 that the block 0 goes to this this block 0 goes to this this means under this particular set I have 4 lines that means this block 0 may goes to line 0 or this block 0 goes to line 1 or this block 0 goes to line 2 or this block 0 goes to line 3 we have that freedom but in case of direct mapping what happens always this block 0 goes to line 0 and similarly not only block 0 block 32 also goes to same but here there is a freedom the block 0 may goes to any line of this particular set so that I mix the advantage of both the direct mapping as well as associative mapping in case of set associative so that in maximum of systems we prefer this set associative mapping functions to map a main memory blocks onto the cache memory lines I hope you understand the concept of mapping techniques in a cache we will meet in the next class thank you for patient listening